Hello everyone, this is Rizwan Sayed, your host for today and welcome to NRI News 24x7. Today we are going to have a conversation with Samat Bajaj. He is a leading entrepreneur in India and he has a startup designers class. So welcome to this conversation Samarth. We are really happy to have you here with us today. Thank you so much Rizwan, very happy to be here and to be talking with you. So uh, Samarth, uh, designers class is a very innovative concept. So can you share your journey about how you got to you know, get this idea for designers class and what was your uh, method and uh, what were your thoughts and practices that basically uh, drove the startup? Um, right, so, so you know, to get to it, uh, Rizwan, um, the designers class has actually been a very, very long journey for me personally. Um, I've always been very passionate about design in general from when I was very young. I don't think there's anything more exciting than being able to create something from the power of your own imagination. Um, you know, so I found design very exciting from when I was very young. And I have also thought of education as being a very important medium for people to grow in. Um, and I found that the Indian education system in general was very archaic for a long time till now. The new education policy that's being passed is really revolutionizing the education system in India. Um, but I've always had an idea of doing something in design education for almost a decade now. Um, and I've been researching it along the way very extensively, but there was nothing that could add substantial value, um, you know, according to me on a mass uh, level or in scale, you know, um, and that's what the designers class is meant to be doing. Um, you know, uh, it, 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 what we identified in the design, uh, in the design space, in the design education space was that, you know, um, the problems were that, you know, the, that uh, it was unaffordable most of design education is expensive in india so it's very unaffordable it's inaccessible because there are very few good institutes across india that actually exist that give you quality design education um the the content in most of the institutions are outdated and a little archaic the structures are archaic so it's not applicable to the real world um you know and um, and 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 the faculty and the infrastructure is lacking to to a large extent um, you know, in the design education space per se, while all other streams like you look at business and you look at um, tech and you look at all these things have really advanced, right? So that's where we came in um, with the idea and we found the environment also conducive because online learning has now become uh, readily acceptable by a large scale of people um, and no one was catering to design education in the online space. So then we came up with the idea of the designers class uh, built with a definitive mission to disrupt and democratize design education across the world uh, by making it affordable, accessible, relevant, engaging to all design aspirants, uh, you know, regardless of your age, regardless of your income brackets, regardless of your geographical location. Um, that's how the startup uh, was built. That's the whole mission and vision behind it. Um, what we've done to actually get here, like I told you, it's been a long process of research, uh, you know, in my mind uh, is from where it began. And then um, I found my co-founders along the way, uh, Adish Nar and Vishal Bajaj. Vishal is the tech uh, backbone of the company and Adish is the financial brains behind the company. Um, and I'm the CEO. Um, and it's been a challenging time uh, because, um, you know, building something, the, the, the designer class is a result you know, a company that was built in the thick of the pandemic. We started actually conceptualizing it in uh, August of 2020, right? Uh, that's when we were in the, yeah, that's when we were in the midst of the pandemic. Uh, you know, that's also an opportunity because EdTech really picked up at that time and became the only way to cater to education. Uh, but we required a lot of offline activity to happen in terms of, you know, shooting all our content because it's all self-paced content. Teams had to work together, um, you know, uh, which had to, we had to get used to the whole world of, you know, virtual working, uh, working from home, um, dealing with several waves and restrictions when it comes to shooting. So, you know, there's a lot of things that we, that we had to deal with, um, given the scenario that we were actually living in was completely unprecedented. Um, I think one thing that really helped us was to have lean, adaptable teams, you know, 
uh, you have to be able to adapt to different environments, especially when you're in a startup and the world today is changing so rapidly. Um, I think adaptability is something that has really got us to this point where we've launched and we've managed to garner a large amount of attention, um, a, a decent subscriber base, and we're growing pretty decently um, you know, right now. But I'd say that the, the, the fact that we managed to be lean in our operations, but also have an agile, adaptable team at the same time, um, you know, allowed us to get here. For instance, if I, if I tell you in terms of shooting, right, um, there were a restriction on the number of people uh, that could be allowed in a shoot, um, even when the world opened up, you know, and, and it's not right. easy to shoot with small teams, but we, we put together such uh, systems in place that really allowed lean, efficient teams to, to get us to where we are. Well, I think that's been a very interesting journey, Samarth, and yeah. uh, it's a perfect, uh, you know, example of building a team and then yeah. building your business. So yeah. I think that is one of the mantras of a successful startup. Right. Before I go ahead, just one one point that I would like yeah. to add. I think all startups do and uh, should do, and it's not very expensive to do. Um, do your research. You have to be. And especially for us, we were getting into a very new space that no one else has ever tried. Uh, you know, right. it, it's it's uh, it's scary but exciting. You know, when you're building right. something uh, that doesn't exist. But what we did do is we did as much research as possible from a qualitative analysis point of view. Um, you know, you can get passionate consultants who've been in the in your space to help you out. Uh, give them a little bit of incentive. Uh, you know, share your passion with them so they they share your vision. We did all of that initially and we got as much data as possible, you know, to see how big my TAM was, you know, that's very important as a business. How many people can you cater to? How much can you price it at that people will be willing to pay? Does that price work for your business model? Is there enough scale for a, for a small price product to really reach that level? You know, there are multiple questions that you need to answer. So before, you know, investing a penny into actually launching or even starting your journey of your startup, you need to answer all these questions for yourself because otherwise you're, you know, you're going to be getting into a hole that's, that's going to just become bigger and bigger and the chances of you sinking become that much more. So that's, you know, one piece of advice that I'll give every startup, uh, you know, entrepreneur. I think uh, that's really very nice of you to speak out so boldly about your research and the yep. importance of research in a startup. And yep. I'm very sure that our audience will definitely love this because very I, few people uh, really speak out. They tell yep. you you need to do research, but nobody tells you how to. So right. the how to part is always missing. And yes. I think this is really a good piece of uh, advice that you're sharing with everyone right now. So, uh, Samat, while you were, uh, you know, uh, we, while we were having this conversation, uh, you uh, have said that you have, you know, achieved a lot of growth. You've achieved international growth too. So, yes. uh, can you let us know what's your international footprint and, uh, you know, what kind of business it is getting you? Uh, so, you know, the, the great thing about being a part of the South Asian community um, is that, you know, you have an audience across the world. Right. Um, and you have an audience that's so, um, you know, close to their culture, regardless of where they are. You know, that's something for us South, South Asians to be very proud of, um, mm -hmm. you know, and helps multiple businesses like me also, uh, you know, because they want to stay connected to, um, to, to the country. Um, and that really helps us. So the names that we have on board already have, you know, a fair amount of presence in countries mm -hmm. like, uh, like, you know, the UK, the US, um, the, the Middle East. Um, you know, large parts of Africa, uh, Southeast Asia, there are multiple places where, you know, we've got uh, a lot of traction from purely because of the interest that I, I believe there are two facets to this. One is because of the names that we have on board are uh, already such solvents of industry that they've, they've spread their wings across the globe. Um, two is Indian design is really becoming very important to the world. You know, what's happening in Indian design is what happened with Japanese design 30 years back. Uh, Indian design is now going in that direction and is becoming that big player in design. Um, you know, so we actually have got subscribers from, from places that, that I never thought, you know, we've got subscribers from, from the Maldives. We've got subscribers from Indonesia. We've got subscribers from Bangladesh. We've got subscribers from all of the GCC countries. 
a lot of subscribers from the US and UK before we even started marketing. We were actually not actively marketing to uh, to any of these markets. Our, um, our, ours is predominantly an India-based marketing uh, strategy, but the visibility has reached these countries. The interest has already peaked in these countries. Um, you know, we've got subscribers from South Africa, uh, from Kenya, um, from uh, Nigeria. Um, so the, it, it's it's really um, it's really spread across the globe uh, very very interestingly. Um, predominantly South Asian, the South the, the customer base is uh, it belongs to the South Asian diaspora right now but we are making um you know we have certain strategies in mind where we want to increase the ethnic reach of okay. our audience as well so you know talking about indian design and yeah. uh, being into the business of design uh, yeah. is it that the demand for indian design is a reason for this strong global footprint that you have or uh, it's the uh, you know what is the secret behind this um, like I told you, it, it's, it boils down to three points for me, right? right? One is that our culture is so amazing uh, that all the South Asians who have gone out of the country are still very rooted to their culture, uh, very much want to be, uh, you know, encompassed in, in this world of, of Indian culture. So they are, they are they, they you know they follow all the all the mentors the, the celebrity mentors that we have on board already have a substantial amount of following uh, in countries out of India. Um, you know, and that's credit to how South Asians have taken Indian culture out to the world as well. Um, you know, so that's one big factor. Uh, the second factor is, yes, Indian design is uh, is so rich, I think, and has been rich for centuries. Uh, it's it's so varied, even within the country, you have so many different forms of design in India. Um, so there's so much to offer the world um, that the world is really, I mean, look at, look at The Eternals as a film, uh, look at Sex and the City as, as a show, you know, they're all talking about the sari. There were controversies that, that you know, came up where someone wore a lenga and called it a sari and got Indian culture wrong. Um, you know, so these conversations are happening. Uh, it's creating a buzz across the world as a design element. Um, and these two reasons um, are predominantly why we already have a global audience um, on the platform. Right. So, uh, again, you know, uh, one more question around design. As, yeah. you, as you are a designer's class, now, can you uh, also share with our audience what is that you are, you know, coaching in design and how are right. you structuring your courses so that, you know, design uh, can basically involve creative participation and a sustainable, uh, you know, seamless connection between the teacher and the student? Absolutely. So, you know, the... the, the the one very important element of design is it has it has got to have real world applicability, right? right. That's very important. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why we've got you the best of the best in the industry to come and teach you because they've taken all the knowledge that you've kind of learned in universities, which is more theoretical, um, right. and applied it to the real world. So they're telling you how they took the knowledge, what they did differently with that knowledge, and created their own niche and how you can do the same, right? Uh, but we are not just another masterclass. That's not what we want to be at all. Uh, we have okay. far more comprehensive, mm -hmm. uh, right? So like our fashion design course actually adds up to about 200 hours worth of content. Um, so the way the courses wow. are structured, the fashion design course is made up of 20 different modules. You have everything ranging from, you know, uh, fashion entrepreneurship to actually drafting and constructing a garment. So it, it teaches you the business element, uh, you know, the technical element and the creative element. You know, so the, okay. the point is to add value to your resume, to your skill set and to your knowledge base, right? So the way it's structured is, you know, the fashion, take, take the fashion course, for instance, uh, while we're going to be active in multiple other design uh, verticals, seven that are already, you know, in the works, interior design with Gauri Khan's already live as well, and five more that we'll be launching soon. Uh, but fashion, say, 20 modules, each module has about 15 different lessons. Now, the way the lessons are kind of broken up, is uh, you know you have in each lesson you have content that's delivered from the designer itself following that to to kind of show you what they're talking about you have demonstration videos to see how how you can execute what they're talking about you have animated ppts and downloadable workbooks that take you through more technical knowledge that is required for that topic that they're speaking about and you have quizzes to kind of brush through what they've spoken about you know and at the end of each module you have um, 
you have a final assessment uh you know that that helps you go through the entire module that particular module brush up on that uh mm -hmm. after you complete the assessments you get an ai generated report of strengths weaknesses and suggestions telling you that this was That's your strength interesting yeah and and you know telling you like okay go back review this lesson to kind of brush up on so and so topic okay. you know so you comprehensively become better at what we are teaching you and then and then you also get you know if you if you complete the assessments with a certain uh, percentage mm -hmm. you right. get uh, you get a, a certificate of completion signed by the designers themselves okay. and you get a chance to win an internship with these designers should you choose to um, like one you can apply for it and and you can uh, you know you can get a chance to win one with them so it it adds value to you from a from a multifold kind of perspective uh, what we've also done is you know we have a free um, newsroom for you to uh, for you to visit which is uh, which is in house curated completely exclusive news to us uh, completely industry based informational news that really helps you enhance your knowledge of those particular industries and use that knowledge to figure out what direction um, you know the industry is going in, in and incorporate that in your uh, in your business practices in your learning in whatever you wish to do and that that you just have to sign up and uh, um, you know sign up for free and the newsroom is fully accessible to you well i think some are hearing this you have definitely taken learning to a new high thank and you you've been very very innovative uh, typically you. the ai assess assessment yeah. of uh, your students that's going to yeah. be really very interesting Thank and you. i'm sure it is going to help them out so that's uh, uh, this said uh, you said that you know gauri khan is going to mentor your home decor students yeah so can yeah. you let us know how did you get uh, gauri khan on board some interesting facts and experiences about this journey so uh, you know from when we conceptualized this entire uh, project uh, we were very keen on getting the best of the best in the industry to give access to the student to our students to the very best in the industry right um, now now gauri i mean from an indian indian uh, interior design perspective there is no bigger name than gauri khan you know um, absolutely she is such an aspirational person um, such an aspirational brand um, and she's actually spent more than you know two decades doing interior design and not um you know very few people have got a chance to hear from her hear her story her experience hear her sensibilities learn from her uh, you know so i was always very very keen to have mrs khan um, on board to teach people interior design um you know luckily for us uh, you know uh, she's she's very um, very uh, hungry to learn herself uh, at all given point, points of time she speaks about you know the 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 hunger that she has to constantly learn she's always learning always growing always trying to do something new learning something new um and i think someone who loves to learn also loves to teach and knows how to teach uh, you know um so she was actually uh, pretty excited about the idea from when we started discussing it uh, with her um and and that was something that was really reassuring for us you know to have someone like her put faith in our platform um that we that we'll also execute her vision uh, correctly you know uh, was something that was really uh, reassuring for us a big feather in the cap for me personally um that's how she came on board yeah not too much of a story of struggle that i can give you there uh, i just love the fact that she shared the same vision that we did well i think uh, your designers classes innovation and uh, the way you have created learning that matched with her hunger yes i hope so that, that, that probably could be a way you know the connection worked okay this is just a speculation on the lighter yeah. side but yeah. uh, i think it's really awesome to have uh, celebrity mentors to uh, share their learnings because they don't only carry uh, you know some sort of traction with them but they also bring a lot of knowledge and industry experience so that's yeah. one thing which is i think missing around and you as a you know online platform are yeah. are definitely consuming the learnings and the experiences of these professionals and connecting them with students so that's right. an awesome job thank you thank you before we conclude this conversation i would definitely request you uh, to you know share uh, how a startup in india can be sustainable and how can they achieve growth 
because there's so many people getting into a startup but very few make it to the threshold line where they can start to survive most right. of them die out and right. they make those small mistakes so if you have uh, any such experiences to uh, help these startups it will be really grateful absolutely uh, you know i think in the last couple of years there's been a frenzy in the startup world uh, you know um, mm -hmm. and i i don't necessarily think that that's a good thing um, for the simple reason that people have been chasing valuations uh, when you should be trying to add value you know they're two very different things you know um i've grown up in a business family um so i've been exposed to business from when i was from when i was very young and i i personally love the way traditional indian businesses old school indian businesses have have run and structured themselves right where where you worked for the bottom line to a large um, extent right uh what happened in the last couple of years i feel was um, was you know uh, just this frenzy to spend money to burn money and grow at at unsustainable levels where you're not making money you're probably never going to make money and you're always going to have to chase funding um you know and that caused a lot of startups to die out a lot of big startups to start falling um you know uh, which is not a conducive way to do business according to me i think the the, the best way to really build your company from ground up is to is to be tight on your expenses don't be frugal uh, don't be penny wise pound foolish but be uh, be lean be tight with your expenses um, you know start seeing traction come into your come into your company get people to buy into your vision um, you know and then grow from there don't just chase that you know in the next 3 years i want to be a unicorn or i want to be at this It, it it doesn't it, and also don't chase just the profit uh, the profitability or the bottom line bit of it look to add value how are you how are you you know you need a very authentic uh, approach to first identifying a problem that exists in the world that requires solving there are many problems that exist that don't require solving you know but identify a problem that requires solving uh, that you're passionate to solve and then use your authenticity to create a solution for that problem don't be a mimic you know use your authenticity to create a a a, a, a solution for that problem you know my favorite quote is by gr d tata where he said uh, uh, who i think is the best indian businessman to ever live um and he said that uncommon un uncommon thinkers reuse what common thinkers refuse you know um and an entrepreneur has to have that a kind of uh, mindset otherwise you're getting nowhere um you know so so i'd say that you know be very tight with your operations at any given point in time look to add value to your consumer base to your target audience uh look to add value as a business to society um and pay attention to being a healthy profitable business you know uh, build your business around the concept of sustainability and profitability and not just you know chasing that billion dollar mark that you have in mind um you know the, the you can you can crash and burn you will hit that billion dollar mark even if you hit it 3 years later as long as you're a valuable business uh and have a valuable business model you'll get there um so slow and steady wins the race according to me you know i i prefer it that way that's how we grown up um it also helps you it gives you the space to kind of adapt to scenarios like you know just just like a small instance uh the, the the venture capitalist world has in the last 6 months has transformed drastically right in what in right. the amount of funding that you see available in what the vcs were looking uh, for at that given point in time to what it's become now there's a drastic change it's almost a 180 degree you know kind of turn that's happened uh now you have to be a very lean adaptable company to change you know if you if you were kind of going after what was initially uh, required to becoming to what is the need of the hour now you've got to at every given point in time have that adaptability and that adaptability helps you also uh, compete with the big boys the bigger you are the tougher it is to kind of pivot the smaller right. and the leaner you are the easier it is for you to kind of pivot and take advantage to grow absolutely i think i agree with that and I definitely appreciate your mantra of adding value So yeah. all those who are into the business of startup or who are planning their own startups, uh, yeah. what Samarth is going to suggest is uh, first identify the business problem, 
look at what the society wants that is the demand and then definitely plan your business by adding values profits yeah. and success and growth i think should definitely come across yeah. as we move along that way Absolutely. So, uh, with this thanks a lot for being with us here today samarth it was a real pleasure having this conversation with you thank you thank you so much rizwan it was great speaking with you thank you, thank you.